How are we going, everybody? I've uh, been doing some repotting today. Lots of it, actually. And I forget how, how much work it is, actually. <laughs> so I got the family to get involved a little bit to help me repot a lot of pot bound plants, weeds, weed infested, and you know, pest and disease infested pots as well. And I thought I'd share a couple with you because I found with our, got this locust that's been way overdue to be repotted. You can see it's about to go into flower there put on its uh, flowers and fruit and all that sort of stuff and I've been pulling the weeds out of it. This has to go in the ground. It's got to go in a larger pot by the way. I haven't got a large enough here. This is for another one that I'm going to demonstrate in a second. Actually no. No, we can't actually do that. I'm thinking out aloud here folks. I've got a tree. I'm going to show you this one as well. <clears throat> so we don't have everything perfect and I don't care who you are out there and how good you are. You never have the perfect garden every day of the year and especially pots as well. So if you're a bit of a grower, a collector, you're always going to have pots. Look at this bin in here. This is what's to come out, what's come out of our pots. So all these weeds we're growing in the pot like this here. Now what we've got here, a couple of things I'm going to demonstrate. Um, one is separating these two plants from, from the same pot or root ball. What we've got is a olive tree. You can see that's why it's falling over. It's tangled up. So we've got the olive tree here, we've got a fig on this side here. Now they've grown in the same pot for a long time. I don't know how successful I'm going to be in pulling them apart. Have a look at this. So this is the challenge. We're going to see if we can cut through the centre of this without too much damage being caused. The other one is the locust tree. So let's just do the locust really quick. And why I brought the two up together is because this is its pot and it needs to go into a larger pot. And this one here belongs to this one, but because I'm separating, I won't need the same size pot. But what you'll find now, if you've got pot plants around the place, you know, you grow a lot, of, you haven't got enough garden, you've got a lot in pots, um, you'll find there'll be a lot of pests that find their way and make home residence in your in the pot, especially from the bottom of the holes. Most common are your snails and slugs. Um, they really take a strong hold there. Then you've got your butcher boys. Um, uh, then you may get some cockchafers, you, you'll also get um, uh, centipedes and things like that, crawling insects, uh, earwigs, uh, harlequin bugs, they all find their way through the bottom and nest inside. And sometimes you'll find through the cavity of the soil, they'll be nesting in things like that, their little pockets in there, or they'll create a little pocket or burrow into it. The other thing is a, a smaller pest, pests that I don't actually walk around too much, but do siphon the sap out of uh, the plant and take the life out of it, in fact. Uh, just a quick one, folks, my voice still isn't 100% back, so if I sound a little bit husky, um, it is because I've been talking continuously since the bloody show, so I'm not getting enough rest. But I'll push on. See over here? See all these little white spots here? It looks like a little bit of wool or, you know, fluffy stuff and almost like mould. It's Actually, this has been exposed for a while now, and that's what you've got to do. What we've got here is millibug, but it's better, it's more evident, it's, it's better noticed inside the pot. You'll find that with pot plants, a lot of pot plants, especially in the smaller sort of confined spaces or courtyards, it gets quite warm in those spaces, and it becomes really, you know, the perfect or ideal environment for creepy crawlies and pests and diseases. And the most common one you'll find in a lot of plants, and it, it happens not only to locusts, it'll happen to gardenias, it'll happen to azaleas in particular. Hebes get infected, Ma marguerite daisies, I know, I remember from the days in the garden centre, I would be forever taking pot plants out of their pots, exposing them to the sunlight, and cleaning the inside of the pot. You see all those white spots on the walls there? That's your pest. That's basically all the pests. Each one of those, it's a colony, basically. Um, Millibug, um, that does that, and it'll basically suck, suck the, uh, the life out of your plants uh, through the root system. So what you've got to do, um, this one here, expose it to the sun. It's real simple. Basically expose it to the sun, you can rub it off, you put your gloves on if you're a little bit paranoid about things like that or you know health issues. Just rub it off like that a little bit, leave it in the sun. While you're at it, you can tease the roots out a little bit because most likely when it's got millibug on it or something like that in the soil and for a long time, it means it's been in that pot for too long and it's pot bound. More than likely it's pot bound. Something like this one here is a little bit pot bound. That in here, if I can find what I've done with my little bottle, here it is. Now you can use a rag. This thing is just to wash, it's the quickest and easiest way. Hot water, a bit of soap, wash it out, or get a bit of metho and spray it onto it like that. Or get a rag and wipe it down, or you can put the metho on the rag directly and wipe it down as well. I'm putting this aside, I'm not putting it back in there. So once you've done that, always check above 
the plant because most times you'll find that when the plant's suffering above, it's because something's not right down below. And that's what's happened with this one here. So now that's going to go into a larger pot. Let's go over here. And what I've got here is our compost. This is a big bin of compost and this is the stuff. I haven't released it yet, folks. Everybody wants it, I know, screaming for it. We're still setting up the infrastructure here, meaning the, the holding bays and all that sort of stuff. So we've got enough on our plate. We can't add this one to it. It'll just make a mess of it. So be patient, but we'll have this out. And I've been using this as a, as a potting medium as well. I've been blending it with our cocoa pith, our superfood and black grit, and it's a great medium. But you know, in this case here, I don't have to blend it, I don't think. I'm going to trial it without it because all I'm doing is going up a little bit in size. So I'm not going to put the cocoa pith in this. I'm going to go straight with that and always put a little bit at the bottom, folks, like that. Did I wipe this one down? It's always good to clean your pots, but for the demonstration purpose, we're going to persevere with this one. So a little bit at the bottom so the bottom's not sitting on plastic. And make sure, <coughs> this is the other thing, you've got to make sure that the top of your soil is not sitting above the rim of the pot. And ideally, it should sit down about, you know, two centimetres or three centimetres below the top for the larger pots, if not lower. And that's your reservoir, basically. So when you water your plant, you fill it up to that, and that's the sort of amount of water it needs each time you water it. Unless you forget to water and it becomes bone dry, you're going to have to do that two or three or four times to rehydrate it. So now, backfill it like that. And the other thing, this little this shovel that I've got here, the Dig Duo, whatever it's called, I can't remember it, um, I'm going to try and find a small handle one like this. This is a perfect shape and spade, uh, shape of spade that is, but it just needs a smaller handle so we can do all the filling because it gets a lot more than your typical um, trowel, hand trowel. They're not wide enough, they don't hold enough on there. And, you know, if you're doing a lot of plants, you want to be able to move a lot of soil quickly. So tap the pot, like that. And as I was saying earlier, Folks, you know, if you've got pot plants in the ground, I mean, sorry, in the garden, and you're a grower too, I guarantee you, you'll all have weeds. At one point or another in your growing life, there'll be weeds, and that's what we have here now, and that's why I'm going through them, and it's time to clean them up. So we're doing the same thing, and you know what it's like. When you start, it's just a nightmare. Tap it, make sure it sinks down to the sides. You don't have to press it down too hard. Um, you can blend it. If you want to be mixing your own medium uh, or wait till we get ours out there that'd be great but you know if you're going to mix your own medium you can mix the black grid and your superfood and your compost together and then fill back fill it but i don't mind just sprinkle a little bit of black grid over the top that's how i've done all my pot plants and the same with superfood so in this case here this is great because it really doesn't it doesn't go hydrophobic, it absorbs every time you water it, no matter how long you leave it dry in between. And that's all that needs, and that's ready to go back into the growing bay. And give it a nice water with uh, liquid gold and EK Butch, and that'll be happy as Larry, and be ready to go into the ground this winter time, folks, because these grow into huge trees. They're not, <laughs> they're not good specimens in pots, unless you try and prune them, and they need a lot of pruning regularly. So repot your plants, check out what's going on around the base of them. As far as this olive tree and the fig tree, what, well, stay tuned for tomorrow morning. We're going to demonstrate how to do that one tomorrow for you. So for now, check your pot plants when you repot. Look for millibug in the soil. Look for pest and disease in there. If you have got a colony going on, like fungus gnats, little flies flying around, midgets and things like that, get some econeme, water it through. You know, at two mils per litre, it's very little amount of econeme that goes into it. Flush it through or disturb the nest. Take the bloody thing out of the pot if you can. If it's too big, you can't, fair enough, use the econine. But smaller pot plants, it's always best to take them out. When there's one pest, there'll be multiple. They start to colonise in there and they start to feed off each other, meaning they help each other. So look after your plants. Superfood, uh, cocoa pith, black grit, all that is available on our website. We've got our Easter long weekend sale going on there, folks. The coupon code word is BUNNY and you get a big saving across the board on all your favourite gardening products. Available at vasiliesgarden.com. Until tomorrow morning from Eva Silly, Maresi. Thank you.